because I was off this week, I had to kind of try and get people in shape. I feel like there's a montage involved in you getting people in shape, maybe with some like 80s techno <laughs> in the background. <laughs> <Pretty much. laughs> yeah, punching meat and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pretty much, but it's, but it's not as exciting when you're kind of that montage involves me just typing emails and Skype calls to people. <laughs> darkness but it's because i've had to shut the blinds because the sun is like absolutely blinding so i know sunshine eh? right i don't know yeah, what it's that not is off, it's not off and i get sunlight in this room just by the kind of positioning of the mm-hmm. house so it's just nice actually got natural light in i've usually got a lamp on and i've uh, kind of has this weird dread glow off it makes it look as if i'm fucking some kind of alcoholic which would be <laughs> fitting <laughs> for today's topic but <laughs> Oh dear. I was gonna say natural sun. I thought like, you'll be getting a tan. <laughs> I know. Before, before my vitamin T tablets in the bin. Vitamin D, sorry. <laughs> Don't know what vitamin um, T is, but how? No, it's that, that well, do you know what? That could be something to do with just you as a person. <laughs> I could be like a, a Tinder chat up line, need some vitamin yeah. T in you. Vitamin <laughs> T. <laughs> oh dear. Are we doing just a question, like because I know this this movie's actually coming out in the cinema, isn't it? In June. So, how spoilery are we going? I think there's enough to talk about without spoiling the sort of last third of the film because you can talk right up until at least the the halfway point, probably yeah. beyond that actually, because you can you're able to talk about like the relationships they have with other people, like mm-hmm. Mad's relationship with his his wife and his family and all that. Without really, I mean, it's it's fairly inevitable. If you, mm-hmm. you know, start talking aye. about you know, what's going to happen, but I will be able to kind of talk about it. We don't need to talk about the, the whole finale and everything, although I, I wanted to talk about Jazz Bally, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to, you know. <laughs> I haven't had the soundtrack off since I watched it. Like, I just think that it's just one banger after the other because it flips from like, what was the talk about it? Like, you know, beautiful little classical piano pieces to just like a sweet Danish punk band at the end. I just, oh, love it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I think in terms of kind of spoilers, you can talk about how far they take the experiment up until the point where they're pushing it, but not necessarily mm-hmm. the consequences that follow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, okay. could you think of it as well from a plot point of view? Not a lot really happens. No, in the grand scheme of things, it's and it's it's not. I don't mean this in a bad way, but it's not anything that we haven't seen before. No, mm-hmm. you know, the consequences of alcohol consumption have been fairly well documented up to this point. So, I mean, we all live in the west of Scotland, so ah, yeah, right. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm reading that Chernobyl book you recommended, Sammy. It's fucking grim. Oh, so it's, it's not half, is it? Christ, we got into the chat I, when I started the chapter that basically started with people's skin falling off. I was like, oh, fuck, <laughs> this isn't light reading. No, it just knocks. <laughs> I'm still holding tonight for a reduction on the one car Y set. John. Well, the BFI shop are offering fifteen percent discount, which takes it down to about one hundred and thirty-five pounds. <laughs> um, did you see that? We're talking about the the One Car Y Eight Blu-ray set. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's even is it four K as well. I'm not sure. So. I don't think but, it was. From yeah, one hundred and fifty. I mean, it's nice and everything, but no. Nah, yeah, I'm just much. not ready to make. I'm not ready to make the like four K, like deep four K Blu-rays and stuff like that. Um, quite happy in my Blu-ray just now. Mm. Yeah. Or a sky will show something in like standard definition and I, I, it looks terrible. I actually sometimes think they downgrade stuff. Because I've got VHSs. Yeah, because <laughs> I, I, I found all VHSs I was kind of looking through and the quality was better than some of the stuff Sky puts on. And yeah, I must admit, when we were watching, because we, I think Amazon are taking the shield off Prime, so we bought the box set. And see, when you actually see the DVD menu of something that came out like 20 years ago, it's really shit. <laughs> Yeah, it's not good, is it? I was going to say it's something like Microsoft Paint, but I don't want to piss off Bill Gates just in case John gets his vaccination. Then, uh... <laughs> he hears us. Right. April's going to be a big month for you, John. A haircut, a vaccine. What is that? It's my cat calendar. Uh, and it's all we kind of funny cat, cat, funny cat drones. Oh, I love that. That looks like the poster for St. Maud, but in cat. 
<laughs> yeah, I was going to talk uh, when I was looking at my uh, list for this. Uh -huh. uh, for the the top three, I, I thought I could have talked about that film Rose's Wedding, the one about the, the oh, Spanish yeah. woman who marries herself because that's a midlife crisis. But I've already talked about it, so. I can see, prefer, I don't think there's any issue we can uh, cross over as long as you can find something new to talk about yeah. it on. Yeah. Like, right. It would be different if we're talking about it, say, like, Falling Down, for example. I was going to pick that, but I didn't think it really... I don't think it's a midlife crisis he's going through. I think it's just a... Uh, he just snaps. I think it would have happened at any point in his life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, you know, if you're going to talk about, say, like, uh, that is a midlife crisis, but also talk about it as a breakdown film, there's not really a lot of differences there. No. No, but, but it's just... It's, it's, a, a midlife crisis is a breakdown in a way, really, isn't yeah. it? It's not as maybe yeah. not quite as serious, you know. I, I you know. think if you can look at it, for, because I may have talked about the wrestler before, but not in the way I'm going to talk about it. Yeah, just now. Yeah, I think you did, but I think it was for something. Oh, I what? It wasn't non-linear narrative, but it was something. It wasn't a like a theme. It, it was more of a sort of film no. concept. I think. I remember yeah, that's a character. Mm -hmm. I think you can get away with it if one of our three listeners got in touch and kind of mentions it, then tough. Yeah. In fairness, the 40 year old virgin is definitely not a midlife crisis either. It's just a film that for some reason still makes me laugh. Yeah, we all, let's be honest, we all Googled midlife crisis films and the same films all come up. Um, yeah. <laughs> we looked at the ones we've seen or remembered yep. in my case. Aye, that's why I try to steer away from it. Some of mine are a wee bit loose. One of the characters in mine is only 38 years old as well. So that fits in with. Tony Stark as well, yeah. sense of age, you know. Okay, so I've been watching a lot of telly over the last wee while because obviously I watched a lot of films from the Glasgow Film Festival, which we talked about previously, so I won't bother talking about those again. I've been taking advantage of the fact that now Star is on Disney+, Plus, so I've been having a look at some of those shows. There's a show called Next, which is a drama about uh, an artificial intelligence taking over the world, which um, actually sounds quite promising and it's, it's reasonable, but it was actually cancelled after one season. It was made maybe about wow. two years ago. It's John Slattery is in the, the main role and it's actually pretty decent. I, I'm quite enjoying it. They're showing it on a week by week basis, even though it was it's all previously been screened. I think it was uh, cancelled after two episodes, you know, the way that US TV t tends to do that. They wow. They spend millions and millions of dollars on something and then cancel it right away when they don't get the, the viewing figures that they really want. So that's actually quite good. I've been completely binging The Expanse on Amazon Prime. It's a sort of a hard sci-fi series. It's based on a series of books. I think there's five seasons on it. I'm almost at the end of season three. Now, to put that in context, about five days ago, I was at the end of season one, so I've watched <laughs> The amount of it, it's cracking, it's really, really good. First season's okay, it's a bit like a detective mystery, it's a missing girl. It's uh, Thomas Janeway is a detective in it, but there's various other people in it as well. Uh, and there's also like this sort of conflict going on. Mars has been colonised, so Earth and Mars are in conflict, and there's people who actually live out in space, in the belt, it's called, and they're all in conflict with each other, and then this life form appears within the solar system, and it all kind of kicks off because they all want a piece of it and everything. And it's absolutely cracking. As I say, first season was okay, but apparently the, the book, the climax of the first book, didn't actually happen until, I think, about midway through the second series. So you're looking at it and you're going, whoa! You know, so you're not expecting something big to happen, maybe mm -hmm. three or four episodes in. But, uh, yeah, really worked. I've obviously been watching The Crown. It's, it's all Charles and Die, you know, I was catching up and all that. So that, <laughs> that was pretty good as well. I watched The the Right Stuff. don't know if you've seen that. It's on Disney Plus as well. It's on the National Geographic channel it's based on the tom wolf book from the mid 80s about the space flights and everything it's, it's all got to do with the sort of first astronauts the first u.s astronauts it was a film back in the, the late 80s as well it was a really good film tv series is really good as well because it expands on certain elements of it it's sort of good because there's 10 episodes it's got room to breathe there's a lot going on with it it's pretty good enjoyed that film wise 
Watched Mary Poppins Returns. I hadn't seen that when it came out. Loved that movie. Really, really funny. Really good. I was surprised. I didn't think it would be all, like anywhere near as good as it was. Uh, yeah, just cracking movie. Loved all the, uh, the dance numbers and things like that. It's obviously got big shoes to fill with uh, the original Mary Poppins, but yeah, it certainly worked. As I said to you both uh, last week, I watched uh, Barb and Star go to Vista Del Mar, a comedy film from Kirsten Wig. It's brilliant. It's really, really fun. It's really, really strange. Um, it could almost fit into our category of midlife crisis. It's two, <laughs> uh, 40, <laughs> two 40-something-year-old women who they, they work in, a, I think it's a furniture shop they work in, and they get made redundant, so they decide to go on holiday. And when they're on holiday, they meet up with this super uh, assassin who is there to uh, end the world <laughs> basically to plant a, a, a virus that's going to end the world and it's just mental it's just absolutely mental it's really really good uh, it's kind of you, you kind of get a real sense of how good it's going to be in the first couple of minutes when the, uh, Barb and Star are with all their other suburban housewife types and they're having their uh, their, their club and they're having hot dog soup and things like that. It's just, yeah, really good. And I also watched the Bill and Ted trilogy as well. Watched the first two because I've obviously got a hold of the third film as well. And it just is, I want to say, excellent, you know. <laughs> really, really Look good. at Simmy's face. <laughs> so disappointed. I really liked it. I, I liked the third film more because I had watched the first two films. So there was a lot of wee in jokes that kind of followed through. And I wouldn't have got as many of them or enjoyed it as much because of the fact that I'd seen the first two, all the things like, you know, it, station and all this sort of stuff it's just it works really well and uh like he's like i, th I think is it misty the uh, the girl that marries uh both mm -hmm. of their father and then yeah I, yeah it's just cracking really good book wise i've i'm trying to actually read a wee bit more so i have actually started bonfire of the vanities which uh i'd never read and is it was sitting about and i thought give that a go. So I've made a wee start on that and really enjoying it. Apart from that, nothing. Just a bit busy doing other other stuff at the moment. So uh, so that's me. Yeah, what you talking about? Just been busy. Other things like just casually running 5Ks here and there. I Come know. Down. Well, I told you I was doing it. So um, I had started, you know, it was one of my friends who had started to do it back in I think it was like September, October, and she posted on Facebook. It was like a picture of her and her daughter, and she was starting to do that. And I thought, you know, I wonder what that's all about, you know, and how, how do we look at it and downloaded the app. And, you know, it doesn't make much sense, but I started in December, which is a perfect time to start going out running, you know, <laughs> <laughs> cold, dark and wet. But the, the upside of that was it gave me a chance to uh, leg legitimately start buying tights and wearing them. So... You know, there's there's an upside to everything, you know. So <laughs> I even well, I even wear running tights sometimes as well. So <laughs> why can't I live so far away? <laughs> yeah, so oh yeah, I'm fully decked out, you know. I'm I'm like uh, some sort of black blob uh, running along the canal up the road there. So yeah, uh, so yeah, started doing it in December. I managed to get up to I don't know if you know how it works, you mm -hmm. it's like it's a podcast app and it they tell you, you know, run for 60 seconds and then rest and it, or walk and then run and all that. And it builds you up from there. So I'd done uh, five and a half weeks. I was halfway through week six and I injured my calf muscle. I just uh, strained it. So I had to stop for a couple of weeks and then that was during all the snow and everything. And I certainly wasn't going out running and that because I would have fallen over and broke my hip or something, you know, something <laughs> daft like that. Uh, and then I would feel really stupid posting on Facebook that I'd broken my hip, you know. <laughs> so, and I had to repeat a couple of weeks after I started back because it would have been really stupid just to start where I'd left off because mm -hmm. obviously, obviously you drop down a wee level. So, yeah, just kept it going and finished it yesterday. Did my 30-minute uh, run. It's I've, I've surprised myself that I've been able to do it, to be perfectly honest, because That's I am... Amazing. I am not a runner. Fantastic. Yeah, I was I was really, really surprised at it. But yeah. Uh, so I'm going to keep going at it. And 
it's actually worked as well. You know, I feel a lot better, and uh, I've actually lost a wee bit of weight as well. So you know, it's, it's all good. So you'll be able to swish at the next scramble night out then. Oh yeah, yeah, I'll be um, slim lean tonic and everything. You know, I'll be find you a beer. You can drink beers anymore. Vodka, diet coke, please. <laughs> Yeah, so that's me. So, what about you guys? What you've been watching? I've been quite. I've, I've really been enjoying the Falcon and Winter Soldier. Watched One Division recently as well, and I thought it was excellent. I thought it was very good. I was skeptical of Marvel announcing all these Disney shows, all this original content. I just thought, I don't know if I'm just basically stretching the MCU a little thin here because I feel that they did do that before. I didn't feel they had too many shows. And the quality differed greatly from from show to show. It just was difficult to kind of watch everything. But I enjoyed One Division, and again, I was skeptical. The Falcon and Winter Soldier. I think it's been absolutely excellent so far. It's only two episodes down for the episode to get released to time of recording, and I'm surprised at how mature the themes and storyline is. I was expecting just some kind of kid show. I'm not gonna lie, mm -hmm. even though. The films necessarily aren't like that, especially if you take into account um, the Winter Soldier movie. But yeah, I think it's really good. I think the acting's great, the storyline's excellent, and I'm looking forward to see where that goes. Speaking of the MCU, I've also been doing a, a rewatch of all the Marvel films in chronological order. Nice. So that's been interesting, and I've been quite enjoying it. So start with Captain Marvel and Captain America. The time you get to Iron Man, and Nick Fury's introduced, and Agent Coulson. You know of them in a linear way, which I think helps the story. So mm. I quite like that. And to be fair, a lot of the films, for the most part up until now, have been released in order. But it's starting to get a bit all over the place now. I've watched both Gardens of the Galaxy back to back. Now I have to go mm. back a couple of years to watch Age of Ultron and see the films in between. But yeah, quite enjoying that. I don't know if anybody watched Fodder on Netflix. It's mm. the Israeli... Uh, it's on my watch list. Action on drama. Watch list. Yep. I, I watched the first season of this last year and thought it was absolutely brilliant. And because the third season had just come out, so I watched yeah. the first season and then just fell away from it. I've been off work this week, so I thought, you know, I'm going to try and get back into it. So I've been watching at least maybe one episode a day of that in uh, the second season, and it's brilliant. The acting is just uh, outstanding. It's such a tense show, and considering mm -hmm. how sensitive Arab is really. Like relations and politics can be. I think the show handles it very, very well, and it's just a great story. Taking away all that kind of like noise yeah. from it, it's just a, a really, a really good show to watch. Book wise, I recently finished Into Thin Air by John Crocker. I think he's how you pronounce his name. He also wrote Into the Wild and Under the Banner of Heaven, and it's a story about the doom, a doom trip to Everest, which was partly the basis for the movie. Everest, it was released, uh, I think it was 2015, with Jake Gyllenhaal, and that's a grim book. It's just, I mean, the, the journalist himself is on the expedition. This isn't just him interviewing people after it. He's on it, and don't give away too much of a spoiler of that. If you've not seen the film or what read the book, how it, how it just goes from zero to 60. One minute, everything's fine, and then it's just, it's just not, and, oh, it's harrowing. But it's it's very 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 good read. I really like that. And currently, I'm reading Animal Kingdom by Ian Rob Wright, which is a horror novel about all the animals in the world just suddenly start attacking humans. It's like maximum overdrive, but rather machines. It's animals. It's this guy at the zoo with his kids, and it just kicks off. And it's quite fun. I'm quite enjoying it. It's quite it's quite a fun book. Which reminded me of Maximum Overdrive, actually. I wouldn't have been seeing that again. And he did recently that certain Stephen King was on cocaine the entire time and directed it. And that makes sense. <laughs> but if you go back on YouTube and if you watch promos for the film, the trailers with Stephen King stand and talk about it. And he's coked out his nut. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a midlife crisis? <laughs> it's possibly. It's potentially. And although they kind of go off topic a wee bit. I found it recently as well. This when John Claude Van Damme was filming Street Fighter, he had like an a crazy cocaine habit. Again, it probably shows. <laughs> if anything, it's like, I thought it would have been steroids. <laughs> I mean, it's like you know, John, John, even you're Gail, you're the American hero. Can you drop the Belgian accent? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that. 
<laughs> yeah, I think that's all. I've been really kind of up to. Sorry, I'm just not over that uh, Jean Claude Van Damme impression there. Uh, I mean, have you, have, you, have, you, have you seen Street Fighter? Uh, no, I'm not really a big Jean Claude fan, believe it or not. And uh, I've, I've watched a few Steven Seagal's, and that's about as trashy as my uh, action movie viewing has 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 got. John, you've seen Street Fighter, I'm sure. Yeah, it was a long time ago, and it was rubbish. But yeah, I <laughs> think it's rubbish in a good way. Yeah, yeah, it's horrific. I mean, it's like nothing like the game for starters, which is strange. It's absolutely mental what the plot is actually about, and but it does like most of these really bad films have a really good villain in Raul Julia doing a very mm. good performance. Oh, so Chris loved film. Yeah, Chris loves him in that movie. He's the last film, yeah. Yeah, yeah. he's the last yeah. film, but he's not even kind of like good the bad. He's genuinely very good in it as very good actors seem to manage to like, salvage something like Masters of the Universe and Frank Langella and Skeletor as a brilliant performance <laughs> it's an absolutely atrocious movie <laughs> oh man I'm always amazed at how like how all these because I've never really seen a, a good sort of like a video game movie do you know what I mean they always seem to be terrible and even when they try and do something quite serious like when they brought out the was it Michael Fassbender did Assassin's Creed? Yeah, absolutely. Right? Like they, they try and do like with quite like serious actors, and yet it's still shit. What I, they never seem to get them right. I don't think. I don't know. Sonic was good. It was so the, the recent the recent was, one with yeah. James Carson. Yeah. All oh, right, okay. Yeah, that was that was that was a lot of fun. I mean, it's, it's had a high bar, but that's arguably the best video game adaption I've done, and it's one of the biggest ones as well because how massive a character Sonic is. Mm-hmm. The Hitman films were okay. They were fine. Or they? Oh, of course, they're based in the game as well, aren't they? So yeah, yeah. they were they were fine. Um, they were watchable. But yeah, they do seem to have a really bad track record when it comes to video game adaptions. And saying that, Resident Evil was a very successful franchise. But was it the good? Film, uh, the first film was actually all right. The first film was okay. After that, it was a bit of a dip in quality. But I mean, they got about <laughs> six films out of it. <laughs> I like how you say a dip in quality. It kind of fell off a fucking cliff. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! <laughs> Do you know the thing is, out? there's like a there semi is, standard, yeah. right? See if I watch films, I think Christ, that was bad. But I, there's like a semi level where I know that you'll just <laughs> yeah. put yourself through all this pish, and you'll still just watch. <laughs> <laughs> if it's got a number greater than five in the title, yeah. Then, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, fun enough, uh, I took it. You mentioned uh, Stars for Disney. I took it to the Stars Play subscription through Amazon. And they have all the Halloween films on it. Oh yeah. no! So I'm, I'm wrecking Haddonfield today in my t-shirt choice <laughs> uh, for you audio listeners out there. But I'm on Halloween too. I haven't even finished that yet. But I quite like it as well. I just haven't had a chance to go back to it. I haven't seen Halloween three, so I'm, I'm going to watch that properly for, the, for all the way through. You've never seen Hall- it? Wow. No, no, I've, I've, I've seen a, a horror film that you haven't seen. Wow. Well. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I have seen it. I can't remember it. Um, yeah, Halloween four. Oh. I, quite enjoy actually and then as John says as the cliff aspect comes into play <laughs> oh dear yeah I know part of me is tempted to pause you reckon was it Psycho 2 you recommended part of me Psycho 2 is good <laughs> part of me is tempted <laughs> Psycho 2 is good Psycho is, I almost picked Psycho 2 from a midlife crisis films oh I wish you had that would be good um, yeah, but I might spoil it for you okay fair enough I have been apart from film festival stuff which uh, John you and I have discussed I watched Moxie on Netflix which I had such high hopes for and it just fell flat in its ass within the first like 10-15 minutes and I was like oh do I keep going with this and I did I persevered for the sake of a review it just it was all a bit twee and all a bit oh tokeny for my like and it didn't act and the thing is it came out at such a good time because we had, you know, the big discussion around like Sarah Everard and stuff like that. And it was like, this could have been a, quite a, a pivotal moment for a film like this to come out. And it, it was just terrible. Like, I'm so disappointed because I do really like Amy Poehler, but it was not a, not a good movie. I also watched a Nepalese film called Looking for a Lady with Fangs and a Moustache, which was really dreamy to look at but didn't quite live up to its unusual <laughs> title because I was like oh this I'm just intrigued by this the name of this film about a guy who he's kind of young and, and trendy and sort of going against Nepalese culture and he decides to set up a, a coffee shop designed to attract tourists 
but he's told that you know he's going to die in seven days if he doesn't find this woman and um, it's all based on sort of kind of religious spirits and you know going back to your culture and your roots and that sort of thing it was really really beautiful to look at but just didn't quite go off the ground for me I also watched the translators and um, which John I know you have seen absolutely loved that like couldn't get enough of it I just wanted it to keep going and keep going and keep going it was so good it made me think of sort of almost like a, a Knives Out style, you know, big ensemble cast, who done it, you know, that sort of thing kind of trips you up several times over. There was actually a few times where I was watching it on the laptop and Chris walked past and I was like, oh! and he was like, what's happened now? Because I just couldn't get my head around all these twists. It was so good. And obviously I've been binge watching The Shield because I've now decided that I'm going to ditch the day job retrain as a detective and join Dutch and Claudette on their team because they are officially <laughs> my favourite humans. I cannot stand Vic Mackey and that psychopath with the teeth that he works with. Dutch and Claudette all the way. Book-wise, I read a book, it's an Argentinian novel called Tender is the Flesh, where there's been a massive virus in the world and we now just accept that we eat human flesh. So all the animals died of radiation or whatever. So there's there's physically just no meat left. So they grow humans in factories or whatever. They cut their vocal cords. They you know cut their legs off and stuff so they can't run. And we just accept that we now eat humans. And there's butcher shops and everything the way you would get just now. But it's human flesh. And the story kind of centers around a guy who works in this massive processing factory and how he kind of comes to terms with the fact that we are literally eating each other. It's really scary and really interesting. And it there were so many times reading it and I was like, oh, I'm gonna have to put this down because it's really freaking me out because they're obviously describing like humans in a slaughterhouse. And it just, it was very good, but very, very, very different. I also read Educated by Tara Westover, which is the, story, the true story of the girl who grew up in a fundamentalist Mormon household where she wasn't a, taught to really read or write she didn't go to school she didn't even have a birth certificate you know her father was very abusive and sort of believed in the end of the world and she sort of escaped that lifestyle ends up going to Oxford and obviously as a published author it was just I'm kind of obsessed with religious fundamentalism so I found it quite interesting I read Ali Stefan's Anatomy of Terror because I enjoyed The Looming Tower it was slightly heavier and more like there was a lot of political theory that I think you would really need to be up to scratch with in order to, it wasn't a leisurely read, to put it that way. And currently I am reading a book about the history of Chernobyl because I bought the Blu-ray and Simi, I knew you had mentioned that book and I thought, oh, I'm going to read this. So again, just some nice, cheery, light reading. As I say, there was a chapter that started and people's skin was hanging off and I was like, oh Christ, why am I doing this to myself? But I've started it now, so I can't not finish it. So There's a bit in the book and... Can... It's not necessarily a spoiler as such, but um, you may have you may have noticed anyway that it really kind of highlights the severity of the actual disaster when it could have <laughs> it could have legitimately wiped out life on Earth. Yep. And that because is, they weren't sure if that lid was going to go back yeah. on properly or if the radiation was going to leak into the water, so they basically had this sort of two sides of a coin that were ready to burst, and they thought it was just it, going to destroy mainland Europe at least. And I just can't get over how that's been. It's just sometimes you look as casually brushed over that, yeah, it almost yeah. ended the world. What? Yes. Like the actual world? Yeah, like all life on the planet, dead. Oh, and we still have these plants? Why? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Do you know, I said that to Chris. I was like, do you know there could be cows grazing in France right now that are still eating parts of radioactive grass and we just eat the meat and we just accept it. So I've, I'm fully tinfoil hat on because... I'm so fascinated by, like, there's a chapter where they talk about, basically, it was, like, pass the parcel. Like, nobody would take responsibility for this. And it was like, well, you have to let that office know, and then that office will deal with it, and then that office will not tell, you know, Scandinavia, even though their um, radiation trackers have just gone off the charts. And I'm just so fascinated by this secrecy of, you know, they even had people getting on buses to evacuate, but they weren't being told why or where they were going. And, you know, it just... It, absolutely beggar's belief and I really loved that series with Jared Harris and it was I bought it on Blu-ray so I got the book to kind of accompany it or whatever yeah it's just it is they do just kind of gloss over the fact that this could literally have taken out the entire human race and the Russians were like but don't tell anyone yeah, it's like... <laughs> that works fine what are you talking about your lungs have gone black it was yeah it was crazy it was absolutely crazy. It's terrifying. good read good read um, 
it's, it's quite good. It's, it's quite good accompanying with as well after you've seen the show, I think. Mm -hmm. And that well, order, I mean, I think you see this. Yeah. Yeah. And it helped me sort of, because obviously you're, and I, now in my head, I've got, I've got Jared Harris and you know, Stella Skarsgård in my head when I'm reading this book. But actually, when you just see the sort of, as I say, the kind of layers of bureaucracy that was just, you know, covering all this up and the sort of severity of, you know, there's kids out playing in the sandboxes. The sandboxes are full of radiation, you know, like it just, I, it was kind of scary. So yeah, that's everything I have been reading and watching. Can I just add one more thing quickly there? Is it, does it doesn't have the pod, mind you, but just kind of talk about the, the dad bod type thing. Mm-hmm. I am sick of articles that talk about dad bods, but don't seem to understand what a dad bod is. Like, yeah, it's dad bod with fucking six packs. You're like, that's not Yeah, a dad it's bod. like, look at Jason Momoa and Zach Efron, they're dad bods. I'm like, sorry, what? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Ru Russell Crowe and is it the other guys or the nice guys? That is dad bod. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I'm sorry. If it's, if it's, if it's, if it's that program Zach Efron, was it? It was a Netflix original, some kid oh, documentary yeah. series. I talked about saving the world one plant at a time. I can't remember what it's called. But... Yeah, it's like people people are going crazy over Zac Efron's dad bod, and I'm like, no, he's just not cut. <laughs> he's also <laughs> just politely hairy. Like that doesn't equate to dad bod either. I think he grew a beard. Yeah, <laughs> grew a beard and drank a bit of water. That's probably the extent of it. Aye, Jason Momoa's oh, dad bod. Oh. Well, where is this dad bod? Is it, is it hiding under his rippling muscles? They're just perpetuating unrealistic body oh, no. for men. Listen, and apparently ever since Instagram became a thing, um, male eating disorders have, have shot up, and I can totally believe that. But do you know what? I think it was on, I was watching like clips from like Graham Norton or something like that. I was obviously awake at like three in the morning. And Henry Cable said that he doesn't drink water for three days before he's going to do a shoot where it involves like see this month so you can literally see like every sinew and vein in his body because he's like yeah been vacuum well, that, packed almost that's what i was saying about zach efron it's exactly the same as him zach efron in baywatch did exactly uh -huh. the same thing he didn't drink for uh, about a day that's, and a half or something it's not healthy or no then um, all well, Hugh Jackman did exactly the same thing as well, and apparently the the guys in Three Hundred were all doing that as well. See, I I'm not going to I'm not going to say there's a fair comparison between how women's uh, image is treated compared to men, but I am quite happy looking at say a Chris Evans, a Zac Efron, The Rock, Hugh Jackman, and that in these superhero films, and they're absolutely muscly and they're built and sitting going, yeah, I look fuck all like that. I'm cool with that. <laughs> Don't tell me Jason Momoa, or uh, Jack Efron. Oh, you Jackman in between filming is a dad bod, and I should look at that. That's just <laughs> they don't sit on their couch picking crisp crumbs out their belly buttons in between movies. <laughs> Here's a, look at Henry Cavill. You're not wearing a top when you're eating crisps, mind you. The, the, the anything else? <laughs> oh man, I'm telling you, that's I, I said to Chris because I spent so much time in the past year, like online and looking at myself through a Zoom call. As soon as it opens up, I'm getting my forehead done i'm getting like an eye lift i'm getting my lips done i'm sick of looking at my old old face all the time what? So I'm getting... are you getting done to your forehead or are you oh, getting it elongated I want, I just squashed want everything, i want everything botoxed to fuck i botoxed. want everyone to just by the time it gets to our wedding i want to look like the bride of wildenstein <laughs> no, i'm just kidding no. I just... <laughs> <make it work>. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so we're going to get, we're going to have a future podcast, but John is absolutely frozen because he's a robot controlled by Bill Gates, and you're absolutely frozen because you have no facial expressions <laughs> left. Yeah, I found this film really tragic you. and sad. Look at my bro, my I, I can't even uh, throw my burrow anywhere. The the thing and the thing is, cause I like grimace like all the time, like and just have total resting bitch face and just sit there like this during all my meetings at work because I frown all the time. That's what makes it worse. Oh dear. So yeah, I'm going to get loads of Botox because I figured that I'm I'm hitting that time in life when I'm in my thirties. I should probably start to preserve what's left. Vacuum pack. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I just think that's so dangerous. Like, I honestly drink like a camel. Like, I drink stuff all yeah. the time, like cups of tea, water, juice, whatever. I can't imagine not fucking drinking for three days. Yeah. Oh, it's crazy scary because it just affects their health so many different ways. And 
that's what happens. These guys end up having all sorts of problems. Look at Tom Hanks developing oh, yeah. really, really bad diabetes. Basically, and a lot of that had to do with the fact that he was putting on weight, taking off weight, all these crazy diets and things uh, like that. Christian Bale will be dead. And like, I know. He's has taken it to extreme. Yeah. I just... Are you not hallucinating like when you're not drinking for like days on end? Surely you're just out of your mind. I can't. I mean, fucking no shit, sure, I can't be healthy, but I'm just going to try to think of actual how bad that must be for you. I mean, I can't even go a few hours for a drink of mm-hmm. water. I mean, I... <laughs> <laughs> that's the opener to the pod. <laughs> 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 no, you're right. It's it's really unhealthy, but these pe- people, it's all got to do with validation, isn't it? They want yeah. uh, to be in the best shape that they can be, you know? Or more, ex- it's not even the best shape they can be. It's extreme. Mm-hmm. It's just beyond the best shape they can be. It's They're just, they're perpetuating a, an ideal that's virtually unobtainable. I'm sure it was Tom Hardy that said that he was not going to take on any more roles that required him to bulk up quite substantially. He said, because he was, he's only like five foot seven or something. And he basically said that he's, I don't think he, it's not osteoporosis, but he's done something where he basically mm-hmm. his bones have started to like crumble because he's put too much bulk on his frame. I think it was maybe for Warrior or stuff like that. So he's actually said he's not going to take on roles like that anymore, which is interesting. Yeah, I mean, because you look at Warrior, it's fucking jacked. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. We look at Dark Knight, and he's huge. He's also quite big in that as well, yeah. Uh, but he's not like bodybuilder cut type way, mm-hmm. like six pack in that. He's just like massive. But he's, he's like a strongman type mm-hmm. body. I didn't realize he was that short. Yeah, five foot seven. I was quite surprised because I was trying to work out as well what height Michael Chiklis is this week because he seems very short in the shield <laughs> compared to everyone else. But he's like a wee bruiser guy as well. He's got that kind of pigeon body. Where it's like yeah. old chest and nothing else. So I was trying to work out what height he was as well. You would have thought that going ahead, you wouldn't get these sort of extremes of weight loss and gain anymore because there are ways to do it using technology rather than. Mm-hmm. Well, that was a big criticism with the three hundred film, where they were saying because if because if through these really rigorous training programs and stuff, clearly that didn't realize it was as bad as that, mind you. And they were saying. Because it's not just CGI some muscle, and I'm like, well, fair play the fact that they actually went through that talk with that. Yeah, Maybe not to yeah. the extent their health, mind you, but but I don't... also given that we can't CGI off a mustache, how confident are we that <laughs> studios could CGI in some abs? Yeah, but look at uh, Sorry, Chris yeah. Evans in the first Captain America when he oh, was. That's made him look smaller. Yeah, he looked. Yeah, he was skinnier and smaller, and then obviously yeah. he was. But yes, there there are ways to do it now. But... Samuel Jackson and. Captain, not only from Captain Marvel, Samuel Jackson, that was like a young man playing him. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Aye. That's Best. so good. Except when he runs. Yeah, the, the, the Irishman's got that thing as well. Oh. <laughs> Aye, that's that's rotten. You can take off the, uh, sorry, I'm getting really bad feedback. You can take off the liver spots and stuff like that, but ultimately you stand up off a chair like a 70 year old man. Like there is a difference, you know, like a 30 year difference. Whatever, so. yeah, I suppose the guys like Chris Evans and that even you Jack, I mean, also are getting more in shape for like the superhero films, but they seem like guys that are generally quite healthy and fit looking the rest of the year. There's not a like, massive weight differences you see, like even like mm-hmm. Chris Evans and Knives Out, it still looks pretty jacked in that jumper mm-hmm. with Cardigan. Yeah, he certainly does. He certainly does. <laughs> <laughs> and Hugh Jackman's got a background with like musical theatre and everything as well, mm-hmm. so you need yeah. to be pretty fit in order to do that. So. Yeah. Well, I saw him at the Hydro and he tap danced and danced and sang and obviously like, I know this sounds really stupid but singing live and dancing like full routines is really difficult mm-hmm. um, and he did the full thing for like two and a half hours and just was not even out of breath I don't even think he sweated, like he's super fit That's because he's yeah. still water on his body <laughs> <laughs> Probably, yeah Did you watch Buzz of Prey? No, I didn't, do you know I don't like Ewan McGregor, so there's that that's just a big off of it, but I'm seeing a lot of discourse online that's saying that the character, like the Harley Quinn character, is really, really well executed and that it's a shame that the film is kind of written off. So I am kind of intrigued by that, but it just... No, I thought it was really good, actually. I didn't, I didn't realise it was written off. I thought it was a really good film. Um, I don't think it's she a does make it. Well. Yeah. She does kind of make it. Um, but it's... It's for Hugh McGregor in it. I can't, I can't tell if he's awful or geniusly brilliant. It's a really, really interesting performance. 
Right, okay. It is. Just... Uh, but see, but Mar- Margot Robbie could win a fucking Oscar for that film easily. Seriously, she's so she good. She is lovely. She's lovely. Yeah. She's just it's a, a, a performance, I feel like. And it's it's mm-hmm. acting, but it's because it's in a superhero film, she's never going to be considered in that way, the same way if it was a dramatic role or more. Was Robert Downey... Oh, I don't know, he did... Did somebody... Was it a campaign for Robert Downey Jr. to be Oscar nominated for Avengers and it just didn't happen? Is that what yeah. it was? He didn't get the Oscar nomination, didn't he? Not know. I, I, I mean, he fledged to go to obviously, but I mean, the Nolan films are a different thing. Yeah. yeah. I think the thing People, is yeah. that my issue with the, the DC films is, and I think that's why I probably liked Shazam so much because it was just kind of fun and lighthearted and stuff like that and it wasn't kind of taking itself too seriously. I think the problem is that the benchmark for so long has been the Nolan films. And I feel like they're they're always trying to replicate that level of darkness. And it's like, it doesn't, not everything needs to be in the shadows. Do you know what I mean? Like films work better yeah. when there's that balance of shadow and light. And I, and I don't ever feel like DC has got there. I think they're really stuck in this whole, those Nolan films perform so well, they were grim as fuck. We'll just have to keep going with that. that's what people want. But even goes back further than that. Tim Burton's films mm. were in that vein. Mm-hmm. You need to go back a bit further to get this kind of Superman films where there were all colourful and bright and just as mm-hmm. American way type idea and that, and that was great. But I do have a soft spot for DC films, especially in rewatches. I think they've kind of they handled it well. Uh, I've watched some of Wonder Woman, the first one on Taylor on Night, like the No Man's Land scene. I still think that's brilliant. I still mm-hmm. think that's just, yeah, just that's excellent. But, I mean, like, where, would, where would you start with the DC, if you're going to do a DC rewatch? Where would you start? Man, would you start Man after? Steel. Yeah, aye, okay. Yeah, Man of Steel. Man of, Steel, Man of Steel, Batman, Superman, Suicide Squad, Wonder Woman, Justice League, then Aquaman, Shazam. Yep. So, Birds of Prey, question. Then, see this sorry? new, see this new, the Suicide Squad. Yeah. Yes. Is that a sequel to Suicide Squad, or is it something different altogether? I think it's going to be, from a gather, a loose sequel. Um, they're sort of distancing themselves for the DCEU, in a mm-hmm. sense. Even Shazam did that. Shazam still ref- I mean, Hendrik, I think Henry Cavill was meant to be in Shazam. He was, but he couldn't and, ever film in conflict yeah. ever, yeah. And they do reference the fact that this other world exists. And even Aquaman, to an extent, starts to distance itself a wee bit from it. And because they're just not, they're not going to do these big crossover films anymore. In mm-hmm. Birds of Prey, still well, they exists. are though. They are going to do these crossover films. That's the thing because their slate going forward is mixing up television and films, and they're bringing them mm-hmm. all, starting to bring them all together. Yeah. That's that. Yeah, yeah. They, there was a couple of films. The Eva DuVernay was supposed to be doing New Gods. Yeah, she right. yeah. been canned. Been canned, and there was another one, a James Wan film, has been canned as well. The trench. Yeah, because there's been a because lot of hype for that. Yeah. yeah, because that's two minority directors, and it's like, oh, but there's money for the Snyder cut. So there's a lot of uh, minority <laughs> discourse around that as well, of you know, just anger over you know, those being canned. What I will say with the Snyder cut, it's with the Snyder cut to be fair. It's like I remember, like, I mean, there's videos on YouTube I mean, it sent me, it's critics years ago saying the Snyder cut doesn't exist. These fanboys are fucking uh, fantasists. Mm-hmm. These same people that are review, reviewing the film, um, there's been a real snobbishness with the Snyder cut. Up until it's pre-production stuff, it costs about 30 million, 50 million at a push to finish. Mm-hmm. Films and new gods and that are going to cost a lot, lot more. I don't mm. think it's a fair comparison. It's like, the same, it's, it's kind of hard to judge the box office. I don't take away the HBO Max thing. The Snyder Cut will make money because mm-hmm. it's already made money from the Josh Whedon Cut. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. yeah, anything else is a bonus on top of that. Um, it didn't cost them a lot to finish it. Yeah, and it was used in order to really launch HBO Max. It was a way of getting subscribers more than anything. But the 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 racial thing doesn't really play either because both directors have other projects at DC ongoing just now anyway. So it's not as if they've been. Oh, listen, I'm not just saying that. I'm just yeah. saying that's no. what I have no. seen. And there's a lot of sort of angry kind of backlash to that particular thing. So HBO Max in the UK, is that a thing yet? Or is that no. still through your Sky or Atlantic? Well, we, HBO programs through Sky Atlantic, but not the app. That's going to be no, really problematic if our cinemas don't open up. Like, if no, I don't get that. to the many saints of Newark, I will cut a bitch. Well, that's the thing, because obviously it's neither cut through Sky Cinema. But mm-hmm. Godzilla vs. King Kong hasn't been. That's a 16, 17 quid to rent. I'm like, nah, thanks. I really want to see it, but I don't want to 17 quid to see it. Mm-hmm. No. It's been getting great reviews as well 
for yeah, a, I know it's, it looks great. Yeah, yeah. It's like, it's I like, think it's a case by case basis with these yeah. films at the moment. Yeah, it's. It feels um, crazy though to be given like I mean, can you imagine if this was in reverse? though? seriously, can you imagine if like so? For example, cinemas open up here uh, next month. Can you imagine if we started getting like loads of big movies and they just weren't being released? Sounds like there's no fucking way that would happen. I don't understand why it's happening in reverse. They are getting the movies. They're getting the movies are opening in US cinemas yeah. and on HBO Max. They're on HBO Max for a month and then they come off it again. So it's like a limited run on it. So just to try and get people to actually sign up for it. But they are getting cinema releases at the same time because Godzilla did something like $10 million at the US box office, which doesn't sound like an awful lot of money considering you usually have like 40, 50 million openings. But it is considering there's still a lot of places that are not open, like New York isn't open and things like that. Mm. So it's it's not going to be that much different here. We're going to get them in the cinemas. If everything goes to plan, then from May onwards, we will get all of these films in the cinemas. So you're you're talking all of the summer blockbusters, all the Warner Brothers films and all that. So we'll yeah. get the Many Saints in New York, actually, the, the local cine world. You know? That's all I want. I've seen like little clips of that and stuff like that, and I'm just... Yeah, um, because see because like honestly see what because Chris said to me before we watched the shield this is up there with Sopranos and Breaking Bad in terms of character development and I was like I okay I'm absolutely obsessed by it and I was like oh we should rewatch the Sopranos after this from start to finish again like I love doing that like I love doing the, the whole big rewatch and I was like I have this idea in my head because the Sopranos is like up here that I need this movie to, to come and meet it because if it yeah. doesn't I am going to be a mess I know it needs to be good. It, 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 it has to be brilliant. I think yeah. it will be good. I think it'll be good. It's not going to be the greatest film ever, let's be honest. Uh, but Sopranos could be the greatest TV show ever. But as long as it's just as the characters just as I think people will be fine with it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. That's it. As long as there's no like massive like plot holes where you're like, oh, well, that can't be so and so because he was doing that. Like, as long as it's like kind of, it does feel faithful and authentic, I think it should be okay. Yeah, I don't want to see some kind of like, well, Tony was actually a really good kid type idea, a good path, and you know he's a gangster, but he's got a heart of gold type idea, that kind aye, of pitch, you know I mean? <laughs> yeah, I, I, want, I want somebody who's just, I think that's why I'm enjoying like The Shield so much, because like Vic is such a massive dickhead, but at the same time, I'm so compelled towards him as a character as well. Yeah. Shane, however, does terrify me, like, what the fuck? Walton Goggins is like a fucking experiment. There's like teeth and forehead, and he's just <laughs> like an absolute psychopath. Like, what the actual? Then you've got beautiful wee Lem with his frosted tips, who is just looking so twenty years ago. And I like, but I'm, I love all. I love that type of character that you're just like. I don't like you, but I'm so enjoying where. I, like, I think yeah. that's why I like Sopranos so much as well because it's there's so many characters who you're just like, oh, you are fucking disgusting, and yet I am so obsessed with your journey. <laughs> 